guys, this is Carol. I've not quite finished this book, and I'm still enjoying it. But I do want to tell you, this book is great. It's really good, but it's not for everyone. If you have someone very close to you that has Alzheimer's, this might not be the book for you. She's talking about the in-between at the very last stages between life and death of her patients. Um, she's a hospice nurse. And so her job is to keep them comfortable as they transition and they pass. And so if you have somebody very close to you in the late stages of Alzheimer's, or actually in any stages of Alzheimer's, this might be too much for you. If you have someone in hospice, this might be too much for you. What's very comforting to me, and I already had positive thoughts about death anyway, I, I'm i not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of the process of dying if I have some horrible, horrible disease or something. But the act of dying and moving on to the next place does not scare me in the least. Um, I will be sad to leave my children and grandchildren. But for me to die, I know I'm going somewhere else. And so it's not nearly as scary to me as it probably is to someone who does not know that. I know that. <laughs> I know that there's something else beyond this life. And I know it's good. And I'm not afraid to go there. <laughs> if you have someone that's just hanging on to life by a thread, this might not be the book for you. I want to make that clear up front. I don't want to hurt anybody by telling you, oh, this is a great book. You might want to read it. But if you have any fear of death and you're not in the position where somebody in your family has Alzheimer's or something, you might really, really, really appreciate reading this book. The things people see and say as they come to the point where they are going to leave this earth are very... Uh, very peaceful. And they see family members that other people in the room don't see, but they see them and they talk to them and they know that their family is there to be with them and to take them on. And it for me to read about that is a very comforting feeling. Now, I, I did have a ball session because I thought, who's going to be waiting for me? But then I thought, but I know who will be waiting for my kids and my grandkids. It'll be me. <laughs> um, my dogs will be waiting for me. Maybe some of my other family members, but um, my first thought was there'll be nobody waiting for me. But no, my dogs will be there. The dogs have been my best friends. <laughs> Um, when it's my kids' time to pass, they won't have to worry. I will be there. I will be there in the room talking to them, just like the people in this book were talking to their loved ones when it was getting close to time. Uh, one very interesting story in here was a lady who had Alzheimer's. And... Hadley, Nurse Hadley, she calls herself, talks about how at the end 
of an Alzheimer patient's life. They don't remember much of anything. They don't, uh, can't do things for themselves. Their body's here, but, um, They need a lot of help. They need a lot of help. And she said they must. They're obviously not here. Their body's here. <laughs> but they aren't. They must go somewhere. They must go to what's next. Because this one patient, Alzheimer's patient, um, one night in the middle of the night, she just thought the bedroom was on fire and she kept screaming fire fire and so her husband called Hadley the hospice nurse and asked her what to do and so she came and did what the doctors instructed her and did everything that she was supposed to do and and it wasn't helping the lady was still just being beside herself screaming the bedroom's on fire the bedroom's on fire and so she called a nurse that had been a hospice nurse for a lot longer and she said uh your patient says the bed's on fire and Hadley says yes and we can't convince her the bed is not on fire and she says we'll move the bed and Hadley's sort of like what <laughs> and she says yes just do it move the bed out of the room and so Hadley and the husband and the patient <laughs> tries to help move the bed into another room. As soon as they get it in the other room, the patient gets in and goes right to sleep. And the husband and Hadley are just thinking, oh, okay. <laughs> and that's where the bed remained the rest of her life. And she was fine. After she passed, um, Hadley talked to the husband a couple of months later, and he, it was at a, he, she had, the, the patient had been, had to be put in a nursing home at one point. And so he had gone back to the nursing home for like a memorial service there for her. Um, and at the end of it, he came and he told Hadley, Two months after his wife passed, evidently they had sold the home. They were, nursing care was very, very expensive for them. Um, he no longer lived in that home. But he told Hadley that two months after his wife passed, that bedroom caught on fire. It was an electrical fire in that bedroom. And Hadley talked to the nurse who originally told her to move the bed. And she says, sometimes things like that happen. They know things. They must leave this earth and visit the next place. And they know things. And because she was screaming fire, fire, they moved the bed out of that room. The rest of the time that her husband lived there, he slept in another room. Um... The nurse, the nurse that had been a hospice nurse for a lot longer said those kind of things happen. Isn't that amazing? I just think this is amazing. So if you don't have a, anybody who's close to death, this might be a great book for you to read. I already was not afraid of dying. I already knew that I'm going someplace else after I take my last breath here. But if, if you don't know that, these stories might really give you a sense of peace. I hope so. I hope so. But I also don't want to send anybody to read this who might be going to find themselves in this situation of, of being a caregiver for somebody very close to death real soon. It, it probably would be a little much. I don't know because, you know, my mind is oversensitive. I have this mental illness. Things touch me differently than a lot of people, but I'm just saying, I'm going to leave it at that. But I can see why this is a number one bestseller. And 
I have really enjoyed reading it. But I'm not in the position of caring for somebody who's in their final days. So that's what I'm going to say about this book. I, 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 I have thoroughly enjoyed reading it, and I'm glad I read it. Um, but hospice is all about helping someone pass. And so you have to go into it realizing every story in here is about somebody who's passing. Okay, guys. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.